you not only did you cover stuff you i mean you went into detail you and and i said i was going to play this devil's advocate and maybe i didn't because you just hit everything you know like that's how i feel so it's not like i mean what was i to play devil's advocate do i was just listening to your story sure you hit all these details I, I don't even know what kind of questions or what you could have missed. So maybe like do you coming out after that, breathing a little bit, uh, taking yourself out of the scenario. Did you look back and say, I didn't touch on this. Maybe this was people were uh, mistaken or from tweets that you got. No, I think I covered anything. And I think at this point, anything that I further go into like there, I wrote a couple things down before we did this. Um, but I almost think going back and re-mentioning things or giving further detail and or giving further examples right. of uh, their awful communication. Like, I just think at this point, it's just beating a dead horse. And uh, it, it, that now, now I'm going to sound like the, the bitter wrestling guy. Oh, I'm disgruntled because I don't work there anymore, you know? But it's, it's not about, like, if you need more examples to something. And that's like, so, like, just looking at this list... There was a lot of stuff with obviously like Triple H and Nash and and, um, and your wife and what else like the chance, but it just seems like that was more. Um, that's more like angle stuff, mm-hmm. and and you know especially the the Triple H stuff. And Let's talk about the chance. That a lot that was a huge one was like, does that bother you? Does it bother me just because people are randomly chanting CM Punk? Yeah, yeah I guess would that would that bother anybody? I think uh, I mean it, it's it's weird because they do I think they do it in two cases they they do it when they see when they see ape and like who is my wife no I was gonna say what is a- she pretty or not AJ oh she's so pretty yeah <laughs> she's super pretty um <laughs> nobody's gonna get that but it's, it's not <laughs> Sorry. it's not for you guys to get it's fine uh Yes. The best was me trying to set that up. Yeah, like, I, I uh, know. Who is I was like, <laughs> what? Who's AJ? Who's Puerto Rican? Who's my wife? What's... Yeah, my very, my very uh, pretty, gorgeous, beautiful wife. Um, they, they chant. They seem to chant my name at her. And uh, when I when I say, or I said, just said earlier that I haven't watched wrestling in three years. It's true. I after I resigned, I didn't watch anything. And I used to be that guy that watches everything and analyzes everything. I would watch all the live shows, uh, but I wouldn't go back and watch anything, especially anything I did. I see, I ceased watching any of my stuff. I just did. I just didn't have the stomach for it anymore. Um, but like, I will continue to, uh, and it's it's not easy either. I will watch my wife's stuff. She'll tell me what segment she is, and I'll watch her stuff. Um, she's my wife. Why wouldn't I? You know. Uh, and it's it's not easy. It's not easy seeing and hearing, you know. And I, it just kind of like makes me feel uncomfortable, and I I have like this anxiety about it. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, they seem to chant my name at her, um, and I've had a couple of people say they think it's like a respect thing, you know, to me. But it's not me. It's her. Chant her name. Right. I don't. Did you uh, like? Sorry to cut you off, but even like last night, I felt there was like a little like. Hey, let's not chant his name. Let's chant her name. And they and I heard like an AJ. Yeah, Lee good. Chant. Yeah, qu- sweet. Do and that. I, it felt like there was like a nice part of the crowd that was like trying to take control and be like, "No, we're chanting AJ Lee's." And there's name. a bunch of people that will chant when there's something that just is awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there, like I see. I see both sides of the argument. I see the people who are like, "Don't chant that guy's name." And obviously, prior to us doing last week's podcast, it was he abandoned us. Don't chant. He's a traitor, which is fucking weird you know what i mean i I don't get fucking mad at the kid at whole foods who i said hi to every day and then he quit and i didn't chase him down a jewel and be like you quit whole foods you bastard you you traitor it's just bizarre to me what was that tweet you got that made me laugh someone was like something at the supermarket you remember? Oh, oh! I just I just bought groceries at the supermarket, so I guess now I own the supermarket manager's house. Yes, yes, I like which that. I thought was. <laughs> and then was, you told me because uh, sadly our friend Marty Derosa is moving out to L.A. to become a big famous superstar. Yeah, anyone in L.A. please put him in your movies and everything. Yeah, and you were like, so where's worst promo ever going to go? And I was like, oh, I guess we're done. And you were like, 
I got real mad. Yeah, you and they said, off. no, you're not done. <laughs> I'm a fan of worst promo ever, and how dare you decide yeah. to cancel it and move on just because one guy's me. You will, you will continue to do it. Sounds and good. I will Kathy Bates, James Conn your ass and fucking strap you to a bed and, and saw your fucking feet off. Saw that in the theater. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. I, was, I, was, weird, weird I read the book oh. and then I was, I, was oh. upset. <laughs> I was real upset they didn't actually saw his foot off. His, well, I don't remember. It was so that's in the ago. book. In the book, foot off with a hacksaw. In the, in the, the movie, she like hobbles him. No. Uh, yeah. That's not as fun. PG-13. But I, I was like very young when that came out. Sure. Too, yeah. Sure. Um, okay. What was the other movie that you said your dad took you to when, uh, when you were my, a kid? I would say my racist grandfather. And not racist because bless his... No, there was some movie that was like scary as shit. Well, he took like, me to Bay Bay's kids. Oh, I no. saw the, the Fly. The Fly. My dad the Fly with Jeff, the, the fly. remake of The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. Like, and you were six, and I was like, your dad took you to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie would have scared the shit scared out of you. the shit out of me. And when he starts, he starts taking his Brumble body fly. apart. Yeah. Oh, God, I had nightmares about that forever. Yeah, absolutely. Goldblum. What did we just see him in? He was just, oh, we were watching Jurassic Park. I watched <laughs> Jurassic Park for the first time. Yeah. I never saw it before. I feel you. Know, it was late. I don't know if you got the best part of it. Although I don't know if it held up that well. It did kind of go slow. In I between liked it. Parts. Okay, I, and by the way, I want to say because we didn't. It was late. It was a very long movie. Uh, I finished it the next day, and okay. I called the babyface Tyrannosaurus Rex turn. Oh, I thought you were going to say I called. I totally like they were cornered in the thing, and I looked at Ape, and I went, "Gee, I hope a good guy dinosaur <laughs> comes out." And j- on fucking cue, here's the T Rex, and I was like, "Yep, all uh, right." Well, you're conditioned to the. I'm pro- a storyteller. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, so yeah, CM Punk chants. I see it. I get it. You know, don't chant at the guys that are bu- uh, busting their ass. And and I I will be completely biased and be like, you paid a ticket, fucking chant and do whatever you want. Um, you know, uh, just don't chant it at my friends and just chant it at the guys that fucking suck and wear lifts in their boots. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Fucking covers everybody. I like it. We're done. Uh, and then there's a lot of. Would you come back to any kind of wrestling? What if you were offered the WrestleMania spot? I did, 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 did. There was a lot of that. And yeah, so, there's a lot of that. Um, and this but, this doesn't exactly correlate, but I love this story, and I think the intelligent folk out there will get it. Um, uh, the Doors did the Ed Sullivan show one time, and and the funny thing is, is like uh, I, I said this to Heyman, and he me- he immediately knew exactly what I was talking about. And he's like, I know exactly what you're going to say. But the Doors, they didn't break yet. And if you were a young band and you're on the Ed Sullivan show, you, that you were made. Bands that hadn't been hadn't broke yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, anybody. Oh, the anybody. Doors. Jesus, I was thinking the what fucking front doors to get into the Ed Sullivan show. Like, what are you talking about? Okay, the band, uh, the doors. Uh, yes, the band, the doors. Okay. Jim Morrison. Yes, yes, the, yes. The other guys that did God, too the much acid. Doors and the Ed Sullivan. Like, do you, I thought it was a curtain, man. No. Okay, so you know the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> yes. uh, you know it was the, it, it was huge. And if you were nobody, you did the Ed, Ed Sullivan show. The next day, you were somebody. So the doors. Are, are fixing to play uh, the Ed Sullivan show and one of the producers or whoever comes up to him and he's like we got a problem guys um, you're doing li- they're, they're supposed to perform Light My Fire and uh, there's a lyric oh, come on baby light my fire try to sit like, higher and higher and, you know and they told him you can't say that because they thought it was overly sexual and the guy was like don't say it change the lyrics and you know, the doors were like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So they just told him, yeah, okay, we'll change the lyrics. And then they got together and, like, we don't know what we're going to do. We got this the Ed Sullivan show, blah, blah, blah. And I guess Jim Morrison was just like, don't sweat it. We'll figure it out. I'll change the lyrics, blah, blah, blah. They go out there. It's live. He just does it. He just fucking does it. Fuck it. He sings it the way it's supposed to be. They're livid. Fucking uh, Sullivan busts in their, their dressing room at the end of their performance. And he's like, you, you know, and he's motherfucking him and all that and he's like you'll never play the Ed Sullivan show ever again and Jim Morrison looks at him and goes we just did play the Ed Sullivan (laughs) show you know I've been there I've done that I don't need to you know like it's become such this big thing to where I'm synonymous with it and it's oh shucks he should have got his Wrestlemania main event and I feel very much like I was communicating that to them for a great many years and uh, I mean, it's it, the window is closed. Yeah, I, I was at WrestleCade this past weekend in North Carolina, and there was a hundred and thirty 
famous wrestlers there. You know what I'm saying? And Is genius there? Lanny Poffa was not Damn there. It. Yes. Oh, well, me? What? Me? That's good. No. A little late. Shout out to Lanny Poffa. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. Um, and there were so many guys because we're discussing, you know, obviously they come up and they talk to me about it and, and a lot of, so much praise from the God, wrestlers. Can, do I have to apologize to you? No, no, no. Because you probably no. get that shit all the time. Uh, I, I mean, from the from the wrestlers, it's great. Okay. From the fans, it's great too, but uh, when it gets overbearing, it's a little... It's oh, interesting. So who is... It's like Mr. Wrestling 2 asking about me? Uh, oh, well, like, do you want to know, like, I don't know, all the wrestlers loved it. I mean, the ones that, like, are with it. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? I guess that's a horrible... <laughs> the on, ones that are with it? You know, they're, they're kind of yeah. like... Like no, I think, uh, you know what, I think whether you work for the WWE or you don't or you did or you never did, I think if you're in the business, I think it's, pre- I, I, I think it's pretty split. I'm not going to be like, ah, I'm this fucking awesome guy and everybody loves what I said. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, yes men in the WWE that want to come out and be like, punk, screw you, pal, and to try to curve favor as they see you know certain people walking down the hallway and all that. And right. I, think there's, I think there's people... Uh, that work there that are uh, they can't say the things that I said and they would like to and they feel oppressed and so you know whatever I mean I heard personally and I'm going to jump back to that one point I was making but I heard personally from a lot even you know wrestlers in the WWE how how much they loved it uh, how much they were appreciative of it and yes that they couldn't say it right and I you know I guess I'm not going to speak for you and you don't have to speak about anything that you heard but um, I heard it, but a lot. So a lot of the, the people talking about it at, at this WrestleCade, um, they were, they all, and this is the wrestler's mind, and it's still my mind. But like, luckily, I don't think it's your mind. They were all like, "Well, he'll be," back. and like everybody, uh, everybody, he'll says be that. back. How could you turn down that money? Everybody says that. Everybody, it's like and- undeniable. <laughs> and I don't want you, because, and here's me th- being one of those people. Almost like I'm almost like I don't want you to say it. Definitely, because maybe there will be a time that you will. Right. Well, you know? yo, never say never. And right? I don't want you to feel bad that you made this big, like, hurrah, I'm never, and then you would feel bad about coming back. If that I, makes go, sense. The, I get a lot of, you're going to go back when you go broke because we know you have $20 million and that's not going to last forever. <laughs> Motherfucker. I had to sit down and if explain you, to somebody how you if, lived. <laughs> if you can't fucking let $20 million. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and you're gonna fucking blow through that in a lifetime <laughs> you you should be fucking beat yeah. up i had to explain to somebody that like he, he was doing the math well he was on top for three years or dun, 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 dun. Uh, i don't think he's i was like i go he could live off of 20 bucks this guy you know like it's he'll be all right but th- th- you know there is that like um that, that idea of like, I guess maybe not WWE, but like pro wrestling. I, that's, that's not a lot. Of, I got hit with that a lot of just wrestling in general. Okay, well then let's play it safe and let's <laughs> just definitely say it's way too fucking early. Uh, I have no interest in fucking going back. The the difference uh, in my uh, appearance, uh, my my mental stability. Like everything across the board f- from now from, you know, nine, ten months ago is so drastically different. Uh, it, I mean, it's very much like after, I, the, after the WrestleMania Taker match and I left and that was, quote unquote, the first break I ever got. Two months, eight weeks, if that. And I had a strained ACL, a torn PCL, a uh, strained MCL and a torn meniscus. So... I couldn't walk for the first week and a half. You know what I mean? So like my quote unquote time off was spent rehabbing. Um, and then I got the call and he was like, ah, need you back. Payback in the Rosemont Horizon. And I was like, I do not want to come back. I don't want to come back until at least SummerSlam. I, still, I was still trying to decompress from that. So like compound that by another fucking year of bullshit and lies and miscommunication and that where you get where I'm at right now. Right. You know? But the idea, and I, one of the interesting ones I saw was the idea of like, well, when you were in the ring, like, were you, was there a point of happiness? That's when I knew I had to leave. I was, uh, I, we, we all know I didn't like working with, uh, with Ryback. I've detailed that. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> go figure. Uh, 
I was told I'd never have to work with him again, and then I got begged to work with him again, and then, you know, I got hurt again. And then um, shortly after that, it was like I was working the Wyatts, and what should have been, and it was, it was awesome working with them because it was fun and it was easy, and I felt like uh, I, I could kind of teach and have fun and learn at the same time, which is, well, what the business is about. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. But this shit wasn't fun. You know what I mean? But I was so beat up that I couldn't, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I, I wish, and, and hell, you know, somebody in the towers has got footage of all those, those house shows. Watch those house shows, man. Watch me fucking, you know, when I know Daniel Bryan's getting beat up and he's taking some heat and I know I got time to fucking rest, watch me fucking crouch down in the corner and physically try to will myself because I know I have to take a hot tag and watch me physically try to be like, okay, you can get through it and I'm dry heaving and it, it's insane. Like, and then I had to work the shield and it's when I, I was working the shield on house shows is when it dawned on me. I was like, this just isn't fun. You know, this just it took like a hard bump one night off of something dumb, like a tackle, you know what I mean? And there's three young, hungry guys and like I took a bump off a tackle and I was looking up at the lights and I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing with my life right, right now? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, which brings me to a funny story. Okay. I wrote it down. I'm going to explain to everybody um, uh, the, the way it works, uh, I guess, in, in WWE. This is, this is how things were for me at the tail end. Uh, I had that... that uh, the, the, the pay-per-view, I can't remember what it was. It might have been TLC, which I think is the one that's coming up, right? So it was in December. Yeah, that makes sense because then it was the Rumble. So I give them, uh, my, my, buddy, uh, my buddy CJ is getting married. I give them the, the date like eight months out, and I say, my friend is getting married on this day. I am not missing it. And Michael Hayes says, that's a pay-per-view. And I said, yep. Well, you're going to have to talk to Vince. And I said, I'm letting you know now. I'm going to go tell him. You guys don't need me for this. You know what I mean? Uh, and it might have been less than eight months because I think I had a valid reason. I, 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 like, I don't know. I, I had a valid reason. Like, well, you, you guys don't really need me. It's not like I'm, I'm not the champ anymore. I'm not you know, doing this. I'm not doing that, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I tell Vince... I tell Hunter, I, I, I tell Michael Hayes, he, he books the house shows, why, I don't know. Uh, I tell him all I need that off. I remind him once a month. I remind Mark Carano <laughs> once a month. I get, a, I get a new calendar every week, and I go, mm, nope, that's still on there. I need that. It needs to say off. I have a wedding. My friend CJ is getting married. I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. So, you know, like a month before, they're like, oh, you're wrestling the Shield three-on-one at the pay-per-view. And I'm just like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I told you guys. I told you guys, I don't know how many times I missed, I missed, how, I don't know how many people's fucking weddings, you know, graduations, funerals, bar mitzvahs, everything. Uh, and I was just like, I'm not, I'm not missing my buddy's wedding. This is ridiculous. Well, where's it at? It's in California. Oh, the pay-per-view's in, in Texas. I was like, I don't care where the pay-per-view <laughs> is. I'm going to be in California, Long Beach. You know what I mean? So then Vince, you know, well, I really need you. But do you, do you really need me? All right, then here's what we're going to do. I'll go on first, Ape goes on second, and we're going to get on a jet, and we're going to fly from, it was either Houston or Dallas. We're going to fly from Houston to Long Beach. I'm going to get off. There will be a car waiting for us. It's going to take us to the, uh, the wedding. I'm going to say hello to everybody, and then, like, we barely, we did this, and we barely made it. It was the tail end of the wedding, but CJ was blown away that I was there. Yep. Said hi to everybody. You know, I heard this. I mean, I the way the way he told it, he was just like, it was done, and then here you come up. You're like, yeah. I'm not missing. I said wedding I was over, and I was like, it. I said I was gonna fucking be here, and here I am, and you know, and then uh, on the way back, like me and Ape had this badass picture of us in front of a jet holding up like In and Out Burger. Yeah, <laughs> like like we just flew to California to get In and Out Burger, mm -hmm. and that's essentially what we did, and then we flew back. Uh, but the that's just an aside. That's how my brain works, and I just talk, and I, I tell stories. I'm sorry. You're a storyteller. Uh, the the pay-per-view itself, um, it's me versus the Shield, three-on-one. This is the, the most pushed three guys since, like, Bobby Lashley. They've 
pushed uh, they've pushed and protected all three guys and they're like you're going over and i was like uh okay that's what you want and then they they stress and they grab me and they stress but you got to make roman look really really strong and i was like no i was just going to fucking shit on him <laughs> and beat him yeah you know I was just I was just gonna tear through them and fucking Superman the shit out of them and just GTS all three of them at the same time, you know, whatever. I was like, yeah, I get it, okay. So while we're putting the match together, every two minutes somebody new is coming up to me. Hey, you got to make them look really strong. So I got so sick of Michael Hayes and everybody else coming up to me, people who aren't even involved in the match. Hey, you're making them look really strong, right? And then finally, I said, you know what? You know what would make them look really strong? If they beat me. Because three guys can't beat one guy. That's fucking dumb. But no, no, but Vince wants you to go over. Okay. But you got to make them look. God damn it. I fucking get it. I know how to do the job. Shut the fuck up. But if one more, you know, like, I'm just going to fucking put them over. That's it. I'm going to put them over. And then they're going to look really strong. And then you're going to be happy, right? Well, no, because they want you to go over. But you have to make them look strong. It's just... It's just the mentality. This is something that's always kind of like gotten under my, the idea of an agent, right? Uh, I get it. They've been in the business for so long and Michael Hayes has been in the business for so long and yada, yada, yada. But it almost seems like this is how I've seen it. In my vision, it's like the wrestler himself is the person that got to that point, their job. They were the one capable of it. They're the one in their artistic prime. And it almost seems like uh, it's like... Um, right, it's someone saying like you gotta like you shouldn't you know that because you're the one doing it, and it's your your job. I like I, I don't feel that the wrestler gets enough credit for knowing the job that they're doing. Well, no, and everything's micromanaged to the point to where there's no creativity anymore. You're you, why why bother going to the job and being like oh I have this great idea when every time you do that. Somebody goes, no, do it this way. And then another person comes by and goes, no, do it this way. You just have to do what they say. Right. And I, and I know, like, I, I think Steve was, Austin was getting to that on his podcast. Like, you could see the wheels turning, him being like, let him just go out there and do it. And it's, I, like, it's like you get uh, your, you know, uh, bottom of the ninth. It's the World Series. You know, like, you know, tying runs on third. And the, the skipper goes, swing away you know there's no out swing away get that guy home and then you get up there and the third base coach is you know yelling at you to bunt and the first base coach is fucking telling you to to lean into the pitch and get hit you know and you're just like wait what but the skipper said what you know what i mean yeah and like everybody has their own fucking agenda but that player is the fucking and that's a great and then if you Analogy. don't do what the first base coach wants, he fucking hates you. And put the, <laughs> and the, you know what I mean? And then the third base coach is like, ha-ha, he did what I wanted. But then, you know what I mean? Like, the next time the first base coach gives you a suggestion, you're like, this motherfucker's trying to sabotage me because he's mad that I didn't do his idea from last time. Yeah. That's the fucking way that shit works. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard, and it's hard, like, because it so, it's, so, it's such a corporation. Like, and I guess that goes back to what everyone's saying. Like, let's take, and I'm not saying, like, TNA or whatever, but just, like, I don't know the idea of in three years doing a, uh, I don't know, a, a show in uh, Japan or a show in England or Me? PWS. Yeah, I'll go work know. the fucking young bucks at PWG. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so that's like not so there. That's not off the table. Like, see the thing. If I say it's not off the table, you're gonna have these people that are yeah. holding on to hope yeah, that I'm coming back. But this is what you I'm what what getting mean? bombarded with. No, 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 I understand yeah. that. And, and I guess it, it, it makes interesting conversation, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think there's plenty of guys out there that think they know... Uh, 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 Jericho, I think, is one of them. Jericho thinks that I feel exactly how he felt in 2005, and he left for two, two and a half years or something like that. Right. So from his perspective... He felt in 2005 when he left that he was never going to come back. And now he sees me saying that, and he's probably like, ah, just wait three years. Gotcha. You'll, you know what I mean? 